welcome now we shall learn about vapor liquid equilibrium which is necessary to find out the any kind of separation which is happening in a system and whatever we have learned earlier about the dew point bubble point etc there we found that we need the value of the equilibrium constant this value may be found out from the principles of vapor liquid equilibrium in this particular lecture series what we shall learn we shall learn about what is thermodynamic equilibrium what is chemical equilibrium and raoult's law then vapor liquid equilibrium in non ideal solutions then vapor liquid equilibrium in real gases and non ideal liquids determination of activity coefficient now why do we need this vapor liquid equilibrium calculations this is because whenever there is any kind of separation involving a vapor and liquid phase then to know how the various species are distributing themselves between the two phases we need to carry out such vapor liquid equilibrium calculations now in this some of the conditions to be satisfied are that each species should have a finite volatility and finite solubility to redistribute itself between the various phases by volatility we mean that the tendency of a given species to go from the liquid phase to the vapor phase and solubility is the meaning of that how a particular species gets dissolved in a liquid so we want that whenever we are carrying out the vapor liquid equilibrium calculations each of the species should be enough volatile and should have enough solubility in the liquid then there are many processes where we need such kind of uh, calculations one of them is distillation which is a very common separation process in the chemical and allied industries to for establishing equilibrium in a system there should be sufficient contact time between the various phases now to describe the equilibrium we need to know the pressure temperature and the composition in each of the phases in the system and to analyze it we need to know the various types of equilibrium relations which will correlate the concentration of each species which are at equilibrium in the various phases present please note that equilibrium may involve more than two phases two phases are a must but it may involve three phases also so we may have two liquid phase one vapor phase or liquid solid and vapor okay so this equilibrium relations depend on the ideality or non ideality of each phase about which we shall just see in a short while now let us first understand what we mean by thermodynamic equilibrium we say that suppose there are two phases 1 and 2 and they are said to be at thermodynamic equilibrium if they satisfy the following conditions first is thermal equilibrium that means the temperature of phase 1 must be equal to temperature of phase 2 second we have mechanical equilibrium that means the pressure in phase 1 must be equal to pressure in phase 2 and thirdly we have chemical equilibrium in which there is one parameter which is called the chemical potential of ith species in jth phase okay so here you see that mu i1 means the chemical potential of ith species in phase number 1 must be equal to the chemical potential of the same ith species in phase 2 so you can see that in case of thermo thermal equilibrium we have only one relation in mechanical equilibrium we have only one relation but for the chemical equilibrium we have c number of relationships that means as many components as many chemical equilibrium relationships 
So, these give rise to c plus 1 plus 1 that is c plus 2 number of relations at the thermodynamic equilibrium. Now, this chemical potential is what is it? The significance is it drives chemical systems to equilibrium and it is an intensive property like temperature, pressure, etcetera and is defined for each species in a given system. That means, a given species will have different values of the chemical potential in different phases and it can be determined, it, um, it cannot be determined by any experimental things, but it is represented in terms of the species concentrations. Now, chemical equilibrium leads to this particular type of inequation in which what is I am showing that how the concentration of species i in phase 1 is related to the its concentration in phase 2 and here the relation relationship is within by is related by this particular parameter k i. This k i is the equilibrium constant which is generally a function of the temperature, pressure and species concentration and there are various ways to find out this value of k i, they may be theoretical or they may be empirical equations. Now, first we come to the ideal system. For ideal systems, we have particular law which is called Raoult law. Now, let us see the statement of this particular vapor liquid equation equilibrium system for ideal cases. Now, it says that the partial pressure of each pure species that is given by small p with a subscript i partial pressure in a solution is proportional to the mole fraction of the component in the liquid mixture being studied. So, as we know the partial pressure is the pressure exerted by a species in a vapor mixture if it had been occupying the same volume at the same temperature as the mixture. So, that partial pressure is proportional to the mole fraction of the same species in the liquid solution and it is given mathematically like this. So, this proportionality constant we put in terms of the p i set that is the partial pressure is equal to this should be x with a subscript i. So, this x i into p i set. So, this with this we find out that we have this is the statement of the uh, Raoult law. For ideal gas, this partial pressure is given from the Dalton's equation and this is y i into p, where y i is the mole fraction of i s species in the vapor phase and p is the total pressure. And with this substitution, we get that y i is equal to p i set by p into x i and this p i set by p is given as k i. So, this in case of the ideal system, the equilibrium constant is nothing but the ratio of the vapor pressure of the i h species to the total pressure of the system. Now, any mixture that obeys the Raoult law are the called the ideal solutions. Now, Raoult's law has its own limitations. Limitations are that both the vapor and the liquid phases must be ideal. And when I say ideal liquid, what I mean that I liquid components that are miscible should be miscible in all proportions. Okay, that is an ideal liquid mixture. Next, when we are mixing the various liquids, then the total volume must be the summation of the individual 
volumes of each liquid species. If it is not, then it is a non-ideal liquid solution. And lastly, whenever the mixing is taking place, there should not be any evolution or absorption of heat energy. If there is no evolution or absorption of energy, then this is an ideal solution. If there is any kind of energy transfer, then it is non-ideal. For example, whenever we are mixing an acid with water, we find that the system becomes heated up. So, in that case, it is not a, an ideal liquid solution. Generally, when a particular component is present in excess, we can always apply the Raoult law. That means, even if we have some impurity and but the impurity amount is very, very small, we can still go with Raoult law. And in especially in case of natural gas and petroleum, we find several times that there are many impurities present, but if we find the main ingredient, main component is in excess, then we can use Raoult law. And most mixtures obey to some extent, however small it may be, this particular Raoult's law. So, Raoult's law is a very handy uh, equation which can be used uh, for estimation of vapor liquid equilibrium. So, these are the following situations that ideal vapor, ideal liquid and there should not be any change in the nature of the liquid. That means, there should not be any kind of reaction that will change the species. Now, real systems may deviate from the Raoult law. In that case, let us see how we go about doing the vapor liquid equilibrium calculations. And if the liquid is non-ideal, then we choose a term what we call activity coefficient. All these things are fundamental thermodynamic principles which about which we are not going to talk about and these are op, they are described very nicely in many good uh, thermodynamic books and I will give some reference also at the end of this lecture. Uh, only thing that we understand that if the liquid is non-ideal, what we do? We use this particular gamma value that is the activity coefficient. Here we say that species A is uh, non-ideal in the liquid phase. So, we have the partial pressure of A in the vapor phase is equal to the X A into P S A. This is still the Raoult's law into with which we modify it by putting this activity coefficient. And the activity coefficient is generally a function of the liquid phase composition, pressure and temperature. Now, if the gas is non-ideal. In that case, we use another parameter that is called the fugacity coefficient. So, if we include the fugacity coefficient, now we can write the vapor liquid equilibrium by modifying the Raoult's law in this manner that on the partial pressure side, we are modifying the partial pressure with by multiplying it with the fugacity coefficient and we are modifying this right hand side x i p i set with the inclusion of activity coefficient and they all belong to the i th species. So, in this case is partial pressure in this side we have the total pressure of the system and the p i set is a function of the temperature that is how the temperature is coming into picture indirectly through the vapor pressure. For determination of the activity coefficient, there are many models. Some of them are empirical models like Margulis equation, Van Laar equation, Regit Kister equation, and some are semi empirical. For example, Wilson equation, NRTL equation, Inuquac equation. These are just some representative equations. There are many more equations given in any standard thermodynamic book and these equations apply to some specific systems. So, it is just suffice here to tell that we should be aware of the various types of equation and 
depending on the case to case basis we should be able to apply the right kind of equations. So, we will not be going into detail of this equation that will take a separate lecture to know this, but in future course we will try to take up some example problems to demonstrate how we can use one or the other type of these equations for the VLE calculation. And these are some of the references, uh, the Sandler's and Smith and Van Nils, which you may refer to know in detail about the concepts which have been covered in this particular lecture. Thank you.